Welcome back, everyone. So after I bought and filmed this uh, Canon MF656 CDW um, multifunction laser color machine, I got to thinking, who makes HP laser printers these days? I mean, it's on everybody's mind. You know, everybody's thinking about that. And I thought I would try to answer that. Um, so, in this video, I will show you a couple of machines that are at my local Best Buy. Best Buy conveniently placed their, um, their Canon and HP laser printers in a line so I could compare them side by side and we could see who makes who. Like the ACDC song, Who Makes Who? Who Makes You? That's a great song. I'm not really an ACDC fan, but that one just sort of hits, you know. And again, they used it in a Stephen King movie, but I digress. Uh, so, who makes HP's current laser machines? I think I've come down to it. I, I think I've figured it out. Uh, so, the short answer is this. Canon is still manufacturing HP color laser machines. And I found two completely different print engines that are definitely a Canon design. One of them is in the lower end products, which is what this would be. I keep hitting the power button thinking it's the button to open the lid, but it's not. So this particular print engine uses a slide out drawer where all the cartridges are placed and they conveniently slide back in. This drawer, by the way, is on rollers, which is quite impressive. Um, now, these lower-end printers aren't really meant for um, heavy use, but they're more of a medium light-duty, actually, I'd say a light-duty or home office uh, capacity is what they're meant for or what they're rated for. Um, and from my personal experience, this particular print engine is actually remarkably reliable. Um, we have several machines at work, including Canons that have the same print engine. I have a a better version of this at work um, in one of our offices and we also have several HP standalone color lasers that are pushing um, actually one of them is about seven years old and it still works reliably um, so these are a fairly reliable print engine from my experience and uh, as we see in this particular video I'm going to show you an HP model that uses the exact same print engine now, things do get a little bit interesting because HP's relationship with Canon was nearly severed a few years back when Xerox was planning on a hostile takeover of HP's printer division, possibly the whole company. I'm not really sure to the extent. I don't really care. But Canon does not want to be in competition with HP Xerox and supply print engines to this company, so they had threatened to pull their um, uh, pull their agreement um, after almost 40 years of uh, being in bed together. So um, that would have been a very interesting industry shakeup had that deal gone through. Due to COVID, apparently Xerox had reneged and did not, or I'm sorry, they revoked or pulled their plans of purchasing HP's, at least their printer division. I don't, again, don't know if it was the whole company, but anyway, it's not important right now. But what is important is this. So HP had been using, I believe, Kyocera print engines um, many years ago with one of their least expensive lines of um, desktop black and white laser machines. Let's scuttle that note for a second and talk about the deal with Samsung. So in 2016, HP purchased Samsung's entire printer division. And that's where things get interesting because um, once that deal went through, um, HP ceased or very quickly ceased all distribution of Samsung brand laser printers in the U.S., possibly globally, and uh, at least in the U.S. anyway. So what happened was HP started using or potentially developing their own print engines, but and I believe based on or using Samsung's technology, engineering, ideas, patents, whatever. 
So what we have on the market today are Canon machines. Okay, let's take a quick step back here. From what I have found, HP's color laser printers are still using, to this day, Canon print engines. So that, that is still a thing. Um, and again, we were pretty much able to prove it by looking at four different machines, and you're going to see this pretty soon, four different machines that are multifunction color and monochrome laser machines. So we're going to look at a lower end HP color laser, which shares a print engine with this Canon 6, MF600 series. Then we're going to look at a higher end HP color laser, which shares a print engine with the MF700 series Canon. Then we're going to look at some monochrome laser printers that are in the budget category, the consumer or small office, small home office um, uh, duty cycle rating. Now, Canon is still using their older... I, I have seen these print engines and machines going back a few years. They're tried and proven and very reliable. HP, on the other hand, if you compare a Canon, a low-end monochrome Canon with a low-end monochrome HP, that's where you're going to find the potential low-end, really rudimentary you know, poor build quality monochrome uh, print engines. You're going to see a lot more plastic in these machines. So it looks like the monochrome side of HP is in-house and or Samsung based. Now, moving, now this is, this is something I want to point out too. If you're like me and you've been buying HP LaserJet Enterprise printers for, in my case, I've been buying them for work for 17 years, and you like the product, they're generally well built. I mean, yes, the quality does go down every generation, it seems. And you have grown fond of the HP M601 and 602, and I think the 603 uh, laser monochrome machines. And then you went and bought a 607 or a 608 or a 609 and you're like, holy crap, what happened? Because the quality took a nosedive. And I'm, I am having more problems with my 606, 7, 8. I am having more problems with those than I ever had with the 601s, 2s, and 3s. Well, here's what happened. The Enterprise monochrome machines appear to be an in-house design. They don't seem to share any commonalities with any Canon products. And if anyone knows better than me, or if you know for a fact and you're in the industry, please correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, those machines, um, they're more noticeable. I was gonna do a video of one uh, where you pull a plastic, blue plastic drawer that's not really on rollers, it's just sort of shoved in there. You pull that out and that's how you take the cartridge out. Um, Another, another noteworthy feature is the rollers are built not into the tray and slightly above, but they're built into the rear of the machine, and they're a bitch to replace. I, <laughs> I have to do them two or three times just to get them lined up correctly. These machines are the worst, and I, um, I was enlightened to find. I did some searching on Canon's current monochrome enterprise uh, product line and Canon still makes the same machine that the 601s, 2s, and 3s are based off of. So you can still buy those machines, but you can't get them from HP. Canon makes them and they still produce them. I don't recall the exact model number, but if you're looking at an enterprise Canon monochrome um, with a 250 sheet. Uh, or sorry, a 500 sheet trach, a full ream of paper. If it holds a full ream, it's got that old engine that we all know and love. Those are good printers. Um, I am actually, now that I know this, it is going to change the course of history, <laughs> or at least as far as printing is concerned where I work. We will be buying cannons from now on. 
Um, again, I have had so many issues with those HPs. I will never touch another one again. For a thousand or twelve hundred dollars, it should be reliable, and they're not. Now, let's talk about Canon's higher end color laser. Now, Canon makes an enterprise level color laser. Um, I believe it is a, they, they may make a multifunction, but I do know they make a standalone. Now that printer, I actually have the HP version of that. One of the key differences with that printer is the cartridges, let me show you once again on my machine here. The cartridges on this particular uh, print engine are loaded with the imaging drum down. Now, from a manufacturing and a whatever standpoint, that makes perfect sense, but it does lead, if you're use, especially if you're using reman cartridges, it leads to more toner um, being lost on the, um, on the transfer roller or transfer belt, and it can lead to problems over time. Um, but a good cleaning every once in a while seems to rectify it. But on the upper end, this is like three levels above this, um, that particular machine, the cartridges are loaded with the imaging drum facing up. So the seals are less likely to wear out and leak um, on, the, on the cartridges themselves. And I have, but here's the thing. We have about three of those at work. One of them is in my office and at least two of them um, have had transfer belt failures. I think one of them, the transfer belt actually cracked, um, and the other one, it scratched. Now, whether that was abuse, I don't know, but something to consider. I like the design better, but I don't think the execution is what it needs to be. Now, those are considered an enterprise-level color laser single-function machine. I know, a lot of words. A lot of words are coming out of my face right now. All right. So this is a work group color laser printer that we have in my office. Um, color Laser Jet M553. Doesn't look like the Canons that we're used to. But I did some sleuthing. Canon doesn't really sell a lot of single function color laser printers these days. But they do have one, the LBP780CX. I'm not even sure they sell it in the U.S. But it is identical to this machine internally. So this is not... Now, what makes this printer special and why I like it so much is that the cartridges are loaded upside down. The imaging drum is on the top. The transfer belt slides in like this and um, it is a replaceable transfer belt there's a waste collector on the back side over here under this behind this cover there's a plastic waste collector it is replaceable um, but ultimately this machine is built by Canon so it looks like um, I did some more homework and the app I'm sorry the HP deal with Samsung was a buyout. So Samsung was purchased by HP, their printer division. And I believe it is the, um, the it's mostly the lower end monochrome lasers that are using HP, utilizing uh, Samsung derived print engines. But this is still a Canon. Now this machine, this is an enterprise level um, unit that um, HP sells. Um, not a terribly expensive machine, but it, it does cost about, uh, I think we paid around 800 or so for this unit, maybe a little more. And uh, this is a, um, this is not a current model, but one of the things that differentiate this machine from most of the other HP laser machines is the way the paper is fed. Um, it's actually fed through like this um, rather than front to back or back to front. It's fed from um, right to left. And uh, I mistook this initially for a similar designed um, Samsung 
Now the Samsung cartridges are loaded in the in the side of the printer. Interesting. Um, but let's take a look at the machines that we found at Best Buy. And um, I was able to film at Best Buy because nobody works there. So <laughs> if I were to have made this video at Staples, I would have had... I'm just going to say it. There's a salesman at, at my local Staples store where Staples is his life. I guarantee you the guy has... Everything in his house is probably Staples brand, and he's really into his job. I don't fault him for that, but you can't be left alone in there. Like, you can't look at anything in that store without having him hover around your shoulder, which is a real pain in the ass when you're trying to film videos like this. So I went with Best Buy because they had all the printers I needed to see right in a row, and I was able to do my comparisons very easily and without interruption again nobody works there nobody shops there so <laughs> right oreo okay let's take a look at what we have and i'm going to show you the differences between the two canon print engines at least from a from a uh, an initial um reaction you can look at the car i can't i can't disassemble a printer in the middle of a best buy but we can at least pull them open and see what they look like inside and kind of see that they are indeed the same print engine. I'm gonna shut up now, let's let's get on with it. So this is one of the uh, newer HP lasers. You can see the cartridge. It goes into here. It's just flimsy as all shit. Paper tray, no rollers. And in the rear, you've got your fuser. And your rollers are behind this cover here. Very difficult to get to. Kind of chintzy. This is a 610. Um, I suspect it's either in-house or Samsung related. I'm not really sure, but. Now this is clearly the Canon based M602. And uh, it's reminiscent of the old HP LaserJet 4000 series, which is it's actually very similar. I wonder how many cycles are on it now. But this is an older design. Canon still makes this printer. Let's do a... Uh, let's check the uh, cycle count on it. Let's see what we got here. Uh, so that was that was a long time ago. Uh, let's see, it's in the configuration page, or it's in the yeah, I think that's it. Let's see, what we get. We've had pretty good luck with these printers. Um, so what do we got? for engine cycles, 394,299. Wow. Oh, if you like these, go with Canon, bulletproof. Now this older model has the uh, duplexer as an exterior unit. Um, again, this is built basically like the 4000 series. Um, a lot of similarities, especially in the paper handling, all of this. So the old 4000s, same thing. Um, they're just more technologically advanced, but they've proven to be a solid product. Last but not least, we have my own printer. This is kind of my knockaround printer. It was, um, it was an old discarded printer from work that, uh, was taken out of service. 
Um, this printer is a LaserJet P4015, and this was actually the last, like the very last of the 4000 series. You'll notice it looks a lot like an M600 series. That's because it's the same damn thing. Um, the only difference is um, really the electronics uh, behind it are a little bit um, older. You know, it's previous generation. Um, <clears throat> this one actually has a keypad on it, uh, which was also part of the uh, the newer, I think it was the M602 had the keypad on it as well. But it's basically the same machine, and if you look at the, um, this one's got a micro cartridge in it. Brand new micro cartridge. Um, but anyway, uh, micro is actually for printing checks. Um, and, uh, you know, I just happen to have one because that's all I have for it. But the print engine is identical to the M600 series. In fact, uses the same rollers. Now, what HP has done... Oh, shit. <laughs> this won't go back in. There we go. What HP did with these printers... I mean, they all have the same print engines, but they all use different cartridges. The, M4, the P4015 uses a different cartridge than the M601, despite it being essentially identical. And that's not because they made better cartridges or they improved it somehow. HP does that on purpose. They deliberately change their cartridges uh, between printer models simply to prevent you from using the same cartridge for multiple printer models. I mean, I get it. <laughs> But I assure you, this printer has never seen the graces of a genuine HP cartridge. Ever. Maybe when it was new, its first cartridge, but every cartridge thereafter has been a generic cartridge. So, what has HP gained other than making it more difficult to manage their products? Now, this isn't just an HP phenomenon. Canon does it. Um, you know, they all do it. They They all do it. It's just... I'm sure Brother does it. I'm sure, you know, Epson, uh, we know Epson does that. But the cartridges don't need to be changed between models. They could use the same freaking cartridge um, across generations of printers, but they choose not to. And it's really just to complicate the, um, what they're deliberately doing is they're, they're, they're complicating the cartridge market Assuming they're using, that the customer is using the cartridges from the manufacturer. But it makes it more difficult for a third party. It, it's actually more costly for a third party. Um, like, for example, Pelican or um, any of the million myriad of um, toner cartridge manufacturers and suppliers. Makes it more difficult for them to manage their own inventories. So, um, therefore driving their costs up, it's kind of a disincent, they're trying to disincentivize, um, generic cartridges. That, that's what they're doing. Um, yeah, bottom line. In fact, Epson, uh, because Epson uses piezoelectric, um, print heads on their inkjets, um, they, the cartridge itself, it's not like, a, it's not like a higher resolution printer will need a different ink in theory. Um, <laughs> whatever. It's all a game, and it's not to help you out. It's not to make life easy for the customer. It's to make life easier for the manufacturer and to make your life more difficult uh, when it comes time to buying cartridges. And also, it gives the manufacturer ultimate control, in theory, over whether or not you can even buy a cartridge for this machine. For example, let's say... HP succeeded in preventing you from using a third-party cartridge, okay? This printer is now well over 10 years old. I believe it's about 15 years old. Still works perfect, despite the mileage on it. Let's take a look at that, by the way. Uh, where am I going? Print configuration. There we go. Despite... Yeah, what was I saying? Despite the fact that it works perfectly fine, when HP decides no longer to manufacture a cartridge for this machine, that's when the printer is uh, effectively done, and you'll now have to buy a brand new machine. 
I love how micro cartridges print. They are so, so rich, so black, so bold. Uh, when you put an, a regular cartridge in this machine, it uh, it doesn't look as nice. It's also magnetic. Um, I think if I put a magnet to this, um, let me actually confirm that. Hold on. But yeah, back to where we were. were so 233,000 cycles. So it's really not that heavily used. HP 4301FDW. This is the Canon MF654CDW. Take a look at these two, side by side. Check out this print engine. It's identical to the MF735CDW. This is the, the newer or the upgraded version of the 600. Okay. Exactly the same engine. Identical in every way. So HP is indeed still using Canon engines, even though. <clears throat> let's take a look at the scanner assembly. Bell drive, gear drive. So they're not using Canon scanners, but they are using HPs. This is a, okay. This is the HP M283FDW compared to the MS600 series. They are still indeed the same engine with a few variances, looks like. That's broken off. Somebody broke this off, that's all. Okay, I see what happened there. Somebody broke this, but it's definitely an HP scanner in there, not a, not a Canon. Um, so same engine, 283 FDW, but a slightly cheaper product. Um, and they're selling it for 429, 283 FDW, yep. Or the Canon is selling for 350 I think yeah I think I think this sells for 350 we don't have one on the shelf there's no there's no price on it either um, these were f I think these are 400 no these were 450 and <clears throat> Canon has knocked a hundred dollars off of this model so so there you go. There's your, this is your lower to lower ish uh, duty cycle print engine. There's your heavy duty cycle print engine. Um, they don't have the comparisons of the two models side by side, but it kind of checks out. So these these two are the same, and these two are the same as far as the print engine goes. And it doesn't tell you anything about the product. Best Buy doesn't know how to sell printers. Now let's take a look. This is a monochrome. And I bet you this uses the same print engine as this entry-level HP over here. Or this one over here. Uh, I'm going to say no. Actually completely different. Yeah, completely different, much cheaper design. Take the cartridge out, you can see there's, it's a fairly, a fairly cheap design. But definitely very enlightening. Now one might ask the question, what about cartridge intercompatibility? Well, no, there, that won't be a thing because they've got these chip locked so that a Canon cartridge will only work on a Canon whereas an HP will only work on an HP. But um, I guess that answers the question. Uh, does HP still use Canon print engines? Yes, they do. 
on certain models. But the lower end inch uh, lasers, I imagine those are probably Kia, not Kia Sarah, but those are probably your Samsungs or some other in-house design.